this is actually happening. <laughs> I'm going to China, guys. It was a process, to say the least, to get my visa back in Bangkok two months ago. Initially, I thought I had to be in Canada to be able to get it because usually they like you to apply from your home country. But luckily, I was able to get it. And today, from Colombo, Sri Lanka, I am flying to Guangzhou. So we have a lot to go over. A lot has been happening, but uh, I have about an hour until my flight leaves. So I want to pop into the lounge to get some breakfast. Not bad. I was actually worried that this lounge wasn't gonna have good breakfast because there's not that many options, unfortunately, here in Colombo Airport as far as lounges go, but this is not bad. Seats are fairly comfy. I love that it's not busy. <laughs> so many lounges nowadays are just absolutely packed and the food looks pretty good. Alright, I think my flight is just about to board. I am flying with Air Asia, as I have with almost every single flight in uh, Southeast Asia. They are really good, like really good budget airline. I was able to get a ticket uh, to Guangzhou uh, via Kuala Lumpur uh, from here in Colombo for about 300 US dollars, something like that, which I feel is quite reasonable considering, you know, Guangzhou is not exactly close. It is basically going to take all day to get there. My flight's at 10.30 a.m. local time and I get into Guangzhou just after midnight. I've got about four hours in Kuala Lumpur, so let's get on this flight and get this journey started. Now I know some of you may be wondering why I decided to go to China in the first place since it's a destination I don't think I've really talked about wanting to go to that much on my channel. If I'm being completely honest, it was a sort of intuitive nudge initially where just three months ago I felt like I kept having signs come up in my everyday life in terms of traveling to China and I came across some places that I never had seen before or heard about that really piqued my interest. And lastly, because China is a sort of controversial destination for some people anyway, and before being able to comment on it fully, I felt like I had to actually make a visit myself and see what it was like. As someone who has traveled quite a lot, I definitely see a dissonance between the kind of news that we are fed about certain places and what the actual reality of a place is. And of course it goes both ways, but I think there's no denying that a lot of changes have been taking place in China, that it is becoming a very advanced sort of nation. Of course, my videos are going to be coming from a touristic sort of perspective and there is only so much I can see and learn in a month. But since most people in the West have never been to China and there's actually not that much content online about traveling there, I thought that I would be the guinea pig for you guys. So as most travelers do, the very first thing I have to do when I arrive at a new terminal is I have to make sure my gate exists. I have to make sure I know where it is because we did get in a little bit later than I was expecting. I was supposed to have a four hour layover 
here in Kuala Lumpur, but it's gonna be more like three. Perfectly fine, gives me more than enough time to get a very late lunch and wander around the airport. But yeah, we are in Terminal 2, and I think that is the one that I prefer. Because one time in Kuala Lumpur, I had a super bad experience where there was like nothing in the area that I was in. And then I had a really good experience where there was plenty of stuff. And so far from the looks of it, uh, it looks like there's a lot here. Oh my god, I forgot that they have a and w here in Malaysia. I was so confused when I was here last year and okay, correct me if I'm wrong, I thought a and w was Canadian originally, wasn't it? But then it says all American food. Maybe it's a US company that bought it. I don't know, but I think it is just so interesting to see our chains from North America here in Asia because the menus are completely different. Like I can see some kind of fish burger. I can see some kind of like, I don't even know what that is. It's like rice and chicken or something with root beer. Super interesting. But yeah, just over here is the closest lounge to my gate, the Travel Club Lounge. There was actually some really nice looking ones, but they're land side. So I'd have to like literally go out of the security part of the airport, which in my mind isn't worth it. So the ones that are air side, this one looked the best. This lounge is officially approved in my books, guys. They have really good looking food. I'm sure it tastes great. Good selection of drinks, comfortable seating, really nice staff. Would highly recommend. Now the next part of the vlog is going to be a voiceover because if I'm being completely honest, I was having a bit of a panic attack because I thought I had everything in line. I thought I did my due diligence of doing all my research as far as what I needed before I entered China, such as a VPN, I had my Alipay set up, I had an Airlo SIM, and I announced on my Instagram, hey guys, like I'm going to China, so exciting. And a lot of people reached out to me specifically asking about which VPN I was going to use. I thought my choices were fine since I had asked some friends who live in China and I took their suggestions. But then all these people were telling me, oh no, that one doesn't work. You should get this one instead. And I was just so confused and overwhelmed. Because the thing is, if you don't have a VPN that works, uh, when you get into China, you won't be able to download a new one. So I was kind of freaking out at the last second and I downloaded two extra ones just in case before I went. The flight itself was fine. It was actually about four hours to get to Guangzhou, so definitely a long travel day. But it was when we got to Guangzhou way after midnight the metro was already closed most of the shops were closed and that's where the culture shock really started to set in are you guys ready for a story time because oh my god so we get in just after midnight and uh immigration was overall fine like the lady kind of looked at me you know a little bit questionable because i think most tourists especially since she can see i'm coming here for the first time go to beijing and shanghai guangzhou isn't the most popular city for tourists to visit from my understanding so i think she probably was a bit confused by that but she did let me through no questions you just have to do your like 
fingerprints when you um, go through immigration. I got my luggage fine, went through customs fine, but it was when I got out of arrivals that the culture shock kind of set in because the first thing that I always do when I get to a new city is I take out some money and get a SIM card. Luckily, luckily my Aerolo eSIM worked as soon as I landed and I'm just so glad um, that that's the choice that I went with. I read a lot of blogs online that it was the best option so I am an affiliate. I'll leave a link in the description because it did genuinely work. And even better, you don't need to use a VPN when you are using the SIM card because it automatically shows you as out of the country, so it's not an issue. For my computer though, I do need to use a VPN when I am on Wi-Fi, so I would recommend downloading VPNs um, before you go to China. So thankfully the SIM card situation was taken care of. Now I just needed to get some money because while I did have Alipay on my phone. I did download it before I went and I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that I downloaded Alipay because in the airport terminal, I think I was in terminal one, there were no ATMs. I went to the information desk. The lady spoke like a little bit of English and said, nope, there's no ATMs here. There's some in terminal two, which was like, way the heck away and by that point it was like 1 30 so i kind of was on the fence of do i just take a chance with using my alipay or do i make the trek all the way to terminal 2. i decided to rely on just alipay and i tried to order uh, a taxi on didi which is like the chinese uber uh, to take me to my hotel but unfortunately, the name of my hotel, since it's not a major hotel, but a great hotel, I actually would really recommend uh, where I decided to stay. The name of my hotel and putting in the address in English did not work whatsoever in the DD app. I even tried to put in things closer to me, but it, it just wasn't working. I don't know, maybe I was doing something wrong, but DD wasn't working for me. So my second option was to take a regular taxi, which I knew I could pay with Alipay for that. But once again, I was then taking a chance that what if Alipay doesn't work? <laughs> I really have no way to pay for my taxi ride because they don't take international credit cards from my understanding and I don't have any local currency. I tried to get local currency when I was in Sri Lanka and the airport but nobody had you on so it is what it is. But I just went for it, I just hoped for the best. I got a taxi, I showed the driver the address from my trip.com app that had the address in Mandarin because taxi driver did not speak English, but it was fine. But anyways, he got me here and thank goodness, thank goodness, Alipay worked. <laughs> really make sure you set that up uh, before you get here because having been here now um, a whole day, I do know that that is what is accepted everywhere. Like Alipay and WeChat, which unfortunately can only be activated with a Chinese credit card. Those are the main payment methods here in China. So my Alipay worked. I get out of the taxi, I see the name of my hotel like on top of the building and I knew it was like on the seventh or eighth floor where the lobby is, but I don't know how to get in the building. <laughs> like walking around the building, there's a whole bunch of different entrances and none of them say the name of the hotel or like this is where you go. And so I'm circling this building, trying some of the doors because some are locked, some are not. And it's like 2, 2.30 by this point. And there's this one lone guy that's like, kind of, you know, sitting there watching me make a fool out of myself. And finally he comes up to me, doesn't speak English, but you know, I can tell he's asking me, where do you need to go? And so I point up and I'm like, this hotel, this hotel. And thankfully he understood right away. He took me to the back of the build and you enter through the back, I guess. And yeah, go up on the seventh floor. That's where the lobby was. Thankfully, they also took Alipay to pay for my stay here. 
and yeah i made it to guangzhou and honestly i have to give myself a pat on the back because it was only because of all my research and pre-planning before i came to china that this whole arrival actually worked out like it would have been a disaster if number one i didn't have a um eSIM because also here in Guangzhou I didn't see any counters or at least they weren't open at like 1 a.m. that uh, I could have gotten a local SIM card at so I would have had no service whatsoever and then number two no ATMs or at least I'd have to you know go all the way to terminal 2 to go get my money so at least I was able to pay for everything with Alipay and then third almost most important is make sure you have all of the addresses of wherever you want to go especially your hotel written in Mandarin because if it is in English there is a chance they won't really be able to understand where it is you want to go and also just a tip when you are walking around the city and this goes for anywhere in the world it's a good idea to have a physical business card or at least the address written down in the local language of the place that you're staying at because what happens if your phone doesn't work what happens if your battery dies and you can't you know show a taxi driver where it is you want to go or access any of your other data you need to have it written down so <laughs> that was my very dramatic but in a way kind of streamlined arrival to Guangzhou. It's interesting because it is a very modern place and from first impressions like I'm in the Tianhe business district everything is just so nice so clean so new. The technology here kind of reminds me of the level in Japan so it is really streamlined but there's a learning curve of how it all works and I'll be honest most things are not that English friendly. I think it's going to be a process it's going to be a learning curve to figure out how things work here but i'm excited because i haven't really been to a country that has given me a challenge to this level to really learn about how things work and uh yeah i feel like you know a fish out of water so uh i hope things will uh you know improve and i will learn so much on this trip i'm really excited to take you guys along so i hope you found this initial arrival to china helpful if you are thinking of coming here and uh yeah <laughs> Welcome to Guangzhou. I'm very excited to be here and my next video will be taking you guys around the city and giving you my first impressions. As always, I'm sending you guys so much love. I hope you're having a fantastic day and keep being your own kind of beautiful. Bye guys.